What tender and juicy drama is going on at your school workplace? A teacher at our school was constantly being reported by her assistant for grossly and absurdly exaggerated offenses, because the assistant doesn't like the teacher she's been assigned to this year. The teacher is new to our school. The assistant is related to a high up administrator, and has already been moved several times. Administration kept writing her up. The teacher, despite her protests that the complaints were absurd, and kept requesting this assistant be switched with another. Teacher finally had enough and quit. Admin spreads around the rumor that the teacher had to leave her job for mental health reasons. True story. Lawsuit time. Someone left the freezer door open and thawed out 100 frozen pizzas. We all know it was you, Jeremy. One co-worker had a bunch of cash stolen from her purse. Everyone knows who did it. Not only was she the only one not in attendance at a meeting when the money went missing, but she suddenly started avoiding my co-worker when they had been friends before that. Also, she would have to know exactly where the purse was stored in order to sneak in and back before being noticed. Now no one in the office is talking to the alleged thief. That's our version of office justice since management can't fire her without more proof. Nothing really, but I try to say as few words as possible every day. So far my record is 4. Hoping for 3 today. Currently sitting at 1 word. Damn receptionist happened to see me coming in, so I had to give her a morning. But I am hoping a nice CR at 430 will polish off my new record. Bye will give you 2. A math cheating ring got busted. They had several group texts set up and one person would get answers from one group and spread it to the others. They're looking at suspending and failing something like 50 people in their senior year too. Happened to my class in college. The dumbasses all used the same answers and made the same mistakes. I think 5 got expelled. Over in customer service, Brenda is complaining about being too hot and throws a tantrum every time someone touches the thermostat. Brad on the other hand, because he's cold and fed up of Brenda's crap, keeps fricking with her and changing the thermostat. Well, I am pretty sure my CEO has been stealing money from our company. I am a textile designer and we have factories in India and China. No one wants to ship our product because they haven't been paid. Personally I haven't gotten a raise in 3 years. All the while the CEO is driving a Bentley and just purchased a new $2 plus million dollar home. He is constantly getting angry calls from our factories who some he owes millions of dollars to 7 mil to 1 in particular, and I am pretty sure if he went to China he would be legally detained BC of how much he owes people, a lot of which fly to our office here in the states and wait for him for meetings, and he ducks out the back door like a coward. One day he even drove an old truck to work so no one would know he was here. You might want to start putting your resume out there, this probably isn't going to end great. We thought the coffee pot was dirty, we thought the coffee was bad, we got new creamer and then new sugar, ours have been spent trying to figure out what's wrong with our coffee, it's the water, the water. This is exactly the level of drama I want in my workplace. A bloke in my office is going to be on Robot Wars and now I'm trying to be his friend. This is my favorite comment here so far. A person in our student council made a petition to allow boys to have any hairstyle they want. He got like 300 signatures out of a school of 1000 but the principe voided the petition and forced him to resign from the council. Sounds like he got a great lesson in how government works. There are two teachers in the office who sit side by side each of the passively fighting over a computer. It's been this way for 6 months now. There are other computers and seats available but neither one will budge. The way it works is one comes in first. He starts using the computer and when the second one comes in a bit after, he'll just sit right next to the first dude really close. The convo usually goes something like this. Are you done? No not yet. I might be a while. Ah that's cool, I've got time, okay cool. This is very odd, there isn't a way to solve this because there isn't a problem other than the teachers being stubborn. At my graphic design school there are a couple of people who are constantly falsely accusing each other of plagiarism. It has gotten so bad that our professor has had to talk to the whole program about it. One of the higher ups in a writer's forum I frequent went on a rant about a week ago about someone who stole the plot of their most recent story, straight up calling them out in public. It's not true, not even close. 
except for a few initial details. I skimmed them both, and it doesn't hold up, but it came out that the person who wrote the new book is also a forum member who hadn't previously revealed her pen name. Half the people are sticking with the higher up, and the other half are accusing her of being a bully over nothing romance novels tend not to have particularly innovative plots, after all, it's a real shitstorm. Everyone is P at one department, because any request for services results in their request for a 2-3 week strategic direction plan. These should be simple 1-2 hours jobs. Another department was just caught using an outside vendor to avoid the department in question, and the cold were just got spicy. That's amazing, I'd love to hear the management meetings after that one. Cops came in looking for one of our co-workers. Nobody is friends with him so we have no way to know what's going on. Assumptions are running wild right now. Without going into any specifics, we rolled out a major update to our software. It has an obvious bug, and our customers are pee. We had assurances from the vendor that it would be fixed before go live, and it wasn't. People might get fired and or sued over this. We have a legit HR investigation going on cause there was a boob grabbing incident. Hope the boob grabber gets fired cause frick she is a blight upon the office. A co-worker was arrested for having a physical relationship with a 13 year old girl. He also assaulted the arresting officer, dislocating his pinky. Last week, another co-worker was fired for racking literally every woman at our plant. A brewing cold war between our project management organization and our software architects concerning who has authority over the process by which software systems are built. The architects, PMO is there to deliver the project, S, and decide who has governance, but they won't have the authority going forwards, as eventually a project ends. Failing that, employer design authority, who is usually an architect, and it'll stop all that nonsense. Last person to get to the daily meeting on Thursday has to buy donuts for the office on Friday. The drama is next level. Our young, African American, lesbian temp was just fired by her older, white, straight boss. It's causing some major backlash and racial division in our office. However, he has hard, undeniable evidence that she was claiming overtime she didn't work and turning in fraudulent time cards. She was also taking overly long lunches and forgetting to register time she'd taken off on her time card. Overall, she was working just over one stroke to the time she was actually getting paid for. I'm one of a very few number of people in our office who know this, but I'm not allowed to say anything due to employee confidentiality rules. So I just have to sit back while her boss gets verbally pummeled by people who don't understand what's really going on. My supervisor got arrested for sex abuse. There hasn't been a conviction but he's been in jail for 2-3 weeks. Doesn't look good for him. Looks good for everyone else though. Last place I worked the VP of HR started sleeping with the married manager of HR. She got a divorce and a few months later ended up leaving the company when VP of HR started banging some other employee. This was a big company, BTW, like 10,000 plus employees. Mike Pence is visiting our building tomorrow and we aren't allowed to use the parking lot because of it. We have to park over a half mile away and walk, but the secret service did put a fake plant on the floor, so that's fun, dash. My competitor's company let go of their most experienced technician. Officially he resigned, but he was fired for racist and racist comments, and overall complacency. However, now they have three people doing his job, and the frick ups and incompetence are incredible. Good job security though. I work for a very prominent doctor in my city, who has a solo practice. His wife is the practice manager. They hired a cute blonde RN in her early 30s. Married, to work part time. I work next to her and she tells me everything. Doctor proceeds to hit on her in person, via intra office instant messaging, and via text. The latter two methods cause the wife to take notice. Instead of apologizing for extreme discomfort, this caused the nurse. The wife progressively and passive aggressively pushes her out of the practice by gradually reducing her hours, making her keep track of everything she does minute by minute and generally making her work environment crappy. She's gone now. It worked. I'm taking a month off before starting a new job. 
being home more has opened my eyes to just how frequently our neighbors fight loudly with the windows open, and how bad the woman and the couple is at faking her orgasm. Co-worker had a meltdown and put in her two weeks notice, started kicking and throwing crap, why? Someone changed the outfits on the mannequin she had dressed the previous day, yikes. We have been noticing small mysterious changes over the last month in our office. A square of brand new carpet being torn up and replaced in a hallway. The runner in front of the cafeteria disappeared and a few weeks later we got a brand new one. Parts of the hallways have been strangely roped off. We also just had security cameras installed in all of the walkways. The situation was finally brought up and discussed in a private meeting. An employee has been pooping randomly throughout the building during business hours. These have been rather large piles of poop that people have narrowly missed stepping in. This is a very professional workplace which makes this entire situation all the more perplexing. This person is still on the loose and it could be anyone. TL. DR. Our office is currently plagued with a mystery pooper. Nothing too bad. We're chronically understaffed so I'm boycotting some work on purpose. Like months behind a few projects. They expect me to work massive amounts of overtime to catch up but I refuse. Was promised an assistant back in April. And again in July. And last month. Out of fricks to give. If you've got the job security. Yeah dude. Frick em. It's with my ex co-workers and my bar mates. They've all been sleeping with each other, and the drama has started to build. Jealousy and other bulls. What used to be a carefree fun zone has turned into a people avoiding each other, getting into stupid pee matches, etc. I don't want nothing to do with any of that crap. At some point it's going to blow up, and rather be as far away from it as possible when that happens. My English teacher is really lazy and didn't feel like grading these papers we wrote but final grades were due so he decided to just not read any of them and give everybody in the whole senior class varying levels of C's. Students aren't pleased with him. The new girl in a CS, customer service, just kinda joined the other early to mid 20s something ladies at lunch one day without being invited and they are all semi nice so it was no big deal. Well I guess new girl is a bit of a crap stirrer and has been talking crap to other people about ladies in the group. I am so excited to see where this goes. This sounds like the beginning of mean girls. A woman at my work is lying about having cancer. She comes up with new sicknesses and calls out all the time. She told us she's pregnant with twins and sent us an ultrasound picture. We searched pregnant twins ultrasound on google and it was on the first page. It goes so much deeper than this too. She would send pictures of herself dead on the hospital table from the nurse, using her phone, to my direct manager. We don't know what to do. Our bosses are telling us to fire her, but we can't. Every time she calls out she has a doctor's note. Check every single note. Reply to every text. She could just simply be sweet talking her provider or have simply started writing her own. I just started my current job almost 2 months ago, beginning of September. Since then, we've had the head of marketing leave his position. Come to find out, he was not only in charge of much of the company's financing, but also the owners. He has been stealing money, over $100,000, from the owner, opening credit lines in his name, draining bank accounts, etc. Not sure how long it's been going on, but I did find out that the same guy was in jail from 1994 to 1998 for embezzling over 1 mil. Not sure why the frick they hired him here in the first place, back in 2003. Knowing this, I work IT so I've had to spend my time going through his emails and his personal computer and shutting down his access to anything and everything. Fun stuff to jump into. Recently, everyone taking AP economics at my high school answered on every question of a multiple choice test to get a curve that gave each of them a 100%. Lawful evil am right. Predictably, administration cancelled the test. Both classes received lectures about work ethic instead of economics the next day. That takes some dedicated commitment. It just takes one person to not do it and make an it to frick it all up. Today we introduced a swear jar board, with scores. I am sitting at one, because the two guys who introduced it are jealous pricks and decided that master bashan was swearing, just because they were sitting on several points each. There's a dude who takes like 30 minutes on the toilet at any one time. 
Our office is small and has one cubicle per gender. It's actively joked about while he's in the loo. Then we have to shut up as soon as the hand rear goes off. Not saying this is the same in your case, but I am one that spends up to 30 minutes in the bathroom at a time. Granted, I don't often take a lunch break or other breaks and prefer to just eat while I work. A source, have vibes. So, to set the scene, I will fake name the characters at the outset. My boss is Megan, her husband is Daniel and my colleague is Melissa. So this all started about 18 months ago. Me, Megan, Daniel and Melissa all work in the same department. However Daniel works in a different team because Megan can't be his boss. Anyway, we are all going for a team night out, curry, karaoke, blah blah, but Megan can't make it. So me, Daniel and Melissa all go for the curry, along with a couple of others. Come Monday morning, Megan calls me into a meeting, crying her eyes out because she's convinced Melissa and Daniel slept together on the night out. She's absolutely hysterical so I agree to ask Melissa as we're pretty close. I ask Melissa, who also hysterically cries, telling me that Megan is using her power as her boss to push her out of the company and begs me to believe that she didn't sleep with Dan. I trust her. I mean, we've known each other for a long time. Dan also promises me nothing happened. However Meg and Dan's marriage suffered as a result of all the drama. Months go by. Megan becomes really strange, starts following Melissa to the bathroom, trying to listen to her recorded calls and access her emails. I tell her that she can't use her position like this, and we do this weekly routine where she cries, promises me she won't do it again, and she does it again the next week. Anyway, it gets to a point where Melissa can't cope and she resigns. Megan walks around all triumphantly. Dan seems to reconcile with his wife, and they start trying for a baby. Last night, Melissa posts a picture of an ultrasound, clearly stating that it is hers and Daniel's baby. It turns out they'd been sleeping together for two years six months of which was prior to their wedding, and she lied to me the whole time. Megan is obviously devastated, walking around like a ghost of herself. Daniel thinks it's the funniest thing ever, now lives with Melissa and is expecting a child on his anniversary date with Megan, which also happens to be Meg's due date with Dan's child. I made a complaint to my boss that our only manager has been doing a crappy job. Everybody was on my side, until she had a breakdown and claimed she was ganged up on. Now, everybody is trying to place the blame on me. My boss who is getting a divorce is sleeping with my roommate co-worker and I am the only one that knows. Except for all of you kind, random strangers. I work in a hostel in Amsterdam. It's a quick turnaround because we hire travelers who are passing through and we let them work for their bed, changing bed sheets and cleaning toilets. People usually stay a couple months. There's this new guy who everyone loves but I am growing more and more suspicious of him. Things keep going missing in the rooms that he cleans. Started off small, earphones, sunglasses, hats, last week 150 pounds was stolen and two days later he asked me the exchange rate for 150 pounds to euros. He also told me that he is traveling on his brother's passport using a fake name and was kicked out of his parents house for stealing. I don't know who to turn to. I like the guy but we can't have a thief working in the building. I've got lots of juicy stories we get some crazy characters coming through. Do something about that. Don't just be complacent. This dude is really freaking crap up. We aren't allowed to decorate our cubicles for Halloween until Monday according to HR's email. However, they have had their decorations and wreaths on their doors for at least a week now. Post HR's email on their door. Threaten to report them to HR for violating HR's policies. That'll stir the kettle. Recently. Three stroke four of the HR staff were either fired or quit within a week, in the film industry, and I at least am very intrigued. Last month we hired a new guy, kind of a sleaze but we ignored it cause he knows python better than all of us and we need a python dude for some reason. Anyway, we have a high school student who runs our phones because it's a low effort job that doesn't require dicking around with the expensive stuff. It's mostly low key because the only phone calls we get are from old people who don't know how to computer and the occasional business who hasn't updated their tech since Windows XP and doesn't understand why their machines are so slow. 
Anyway without getting into specifics, dude started hitting on the phone girl about a week ago. She's 16 and he's 35. Gave her his phone number and asked if she wanted to hang out at his place. Alone. But he totally didn't mean anything like that. He said this before anyone even suggested it. Although we were all thinking it. Last week he accidentally grabbed her butt. I've never seen my boss get mad. But he laid the dude out with a solid hook to the face. Now there are cops. The girl is traumatized and will probably quit. Not that I blame her. The dude tested positive for C. And my boss tested positive for weed. Not surprising he's the biggest stoner I've met since college. And so since my boss also owns the business someone is either getting a massive promotion, which none of us are even remotely qualified for, or I'm gonna be out of a job soon, depending on how court goes I guess. We haven't seen him since. IDK if he's in jail or what tbh. We're basically just going through the motions till we find something out. Fun times. Serious, what's the scariest work related incident you've experienced? Former teacher here. Saw a fight going down just inside the boys room next to the cafeteria. Didn't understand how bad it was until I grabbed the kid closest to me and flung him backwards against the wall. That's when I saw the other kid holding his stomach and the blood oozing out of the stab wound through his fingers. That was the moment I realized the kid I just chucked behind me, and couldn't see, must be holding a weapon. That split second of total vulnerability before I wheeled around on him was pretty terrifying. Fortunately, the kid holding the cheap steak knife he'd brought from home wasn't as tough as he thought he was. He was still leaning against the wall right where I tossed him looking like he was about to puke. Turns out the kid that got stabbed was a serious bully and the other kid had had enough. Injury wasn't serious and the school expelled the kid who did the stabbing. I used to be a manager at a big box retailer. One night, we got a call from LAPD. We weren't in LA, but nearby, asking if we had an employee named John. He was working in the stockroom that night, so they told us to not allow him on the sales floor for any reason. It turns out his uncle, high on something, had killed both of his parents and his younger sister, and was heard talking about coming for John, all over an inheritance of a few thousand dollars. Within minutes of the phone call, local cops were both parked outside the building and stationed inside the doors with pictures of the uncle. Luckily for us, he was caught after he hit a bus stop driving to our store. LAPD detectives came and broke the news to John, in our stockroom. I've never heard such an awful sound of horror and anguish in my life, and hope never to hear anything like it again. The managers kept him on the payroll, falsifying his punches to make sure he kept his job until he was ready to come back and make sure he had money to live. He came back after 6 weeks a very different person. A twin engine aircraft lost an engine on takeoff, went into an uncontrollable left turn, and crashed into a building at the airport I used to work at. 4 people died. Working the response to that was something I'd rather not do again. I work as a safety inspector for working on with very polluted ground. Regulations said I needed to be present one day a week, so I was. Just in time to see one of the workmen cross the very dangerous, enter only with full protective gear fences, and hop across a trench, which was full of heavier than air nastiness. He misses, slips down and in short order proceeds to first puke out his stomach contents and then pass out mid vomit. By the time they pulled him out and into the ambulance, he had a lung capacity of about 30%, and was pretty much blind. Poor man never got a penny apart from the we're really sorry pension from work, because it was his own fault. I was working in a really busy bar when the assistant manager ran out to me from the office and told me to call security. I did it right away, but as I was doing so, looked over to the office. It was very small with a window you could see directly into, and saw our then head chef serving a proper beat down onto our general manager. My manager was sitting down with his head covered by his arms, and this guy was just wailing into him. I have never seen someone's arms going so fast. I can't imagine how many hits he got in. Some other kitchen guys were trying to get the door open, but there was a key code on it, so it was just a bunch of guys hammering on the door, begging the chef to stop. The assistant manager ran back to open the door so that the guys could pull him off. He was still trying to go for it, and it took so many of them to peel him away. Security arrived quickly and got him out of there. He was arrested and charged, and obviously never came back. 
What happened could have been anyone at any time, I guess. He was having a mild argument over rotors with my assistant manager, when my general manager stepped in. He just snapped. He even picked up the computer monitor in the office and smashed it to pieces in the process. My GM ended up with stitches on his head. This whole situation probably only lasted a few minutes, but that it happened in such a busy place in the middle of the day, it was just chaos. Chefs are all crazy, man. I've never worked in a kitchen where the head chef wasn't a psycho. We had a co-worker have a massive heart attack in the office during a court proceeding. I ended up just storming out of the courtroom to assist in CPR. He ended up surviving, amazingly, and had a quadruple bypass. Trying to do a physical examination on a cow. Get squished up against the metal railing, smacking the crap out of the cow to get it to move. Realize the cow probably doesn't even notice. Luckily, there was a big burly guy around to help. Big cows can be so dangerous, even when they are not doing anything crazy, but are scared. Amped up cow is scary too. Tornado at 1am when we had a tent full of about 500 drunk people that we had to herd indoors to a safe place. I'm an event planner. I was a social worker. Dealt with a case where a couple high on M tied their 6 month old baby to a washing line and hit it back and forth to each other using baseball bats killing the child. When I was still a student architect, working part time in a firm, we had an on site workplace accident. We were doing some restoration work to an old hotel that had its roof blown off during the winter. The contract was going well, and the work on site was quick, but a storm came through and ended up causing more damage to the work site. We shut the site down, told the contractor to keep his workers off site until we could have a surveyor come in and make sure everything was stable. The contractor cleared all his men off the site. But they forgot that there was a subcontractor working on site that day, removing old door frames. The damaged roof wasn't pinned securely, and the whole thing came down. While the guy was still inside working, he died from his injuries, and everyone involved in that contract got sued. In the end the contractor was found to be at fault, because it was their job to keep track of who was on site. But the architect also ended up folding just from legal costs. I'm a construction superintendent. I've seen some crap on the job that would make a lot of folks here curl up into a ball and cry. The worst was a crane accident. It was a 500 ton mobile crane. Brand freaking shiny new, too. We were setting precast panels for a large office warehouse combined building. The oiler aka crane operator in training was polishing the shiny aluminum deck on the crane while the crane was operating. He thought he was in a safe spot because the panels were on the truck over there and were being set over here, so he was not in the current swing area of the crane, except that the precast guys needed a box of plates that were on the opposite side of the crane, so the crane swung that away, but the freaking guy was smashed between the crane's counterweights and the crane deck, he never made a sound, and the operator did not even know it had happened. His body was twisted and mangled nearly beyond recognition before one of the truck drivers saw the blood. There were little bits of brain and bone spread all over the place. It was freaking horrible. Lots of horror show stories from my old job. They kind of all blend together. Anyway, ex-healthcare security. The area I worked in had a lot of problems with homelessness, addictions, and psych issues. You get used to a lot of weird crap. But one time I was asked to evict someone from the waiting room who'd been in the bathroom for an hour. I opened the door and see him with a needle. Fine. We all suspected he was shooting up in there. Crappy. But it happens. Except he wasn't. He was using his needle to extract blood from his arm and squirt it down the sink. Over and over again. Maybe he was trying to kill himself. Or maybe he had some delusion of needing to purify his blood. He was speaking French the whole time so it was unclear. Nurses demand we get him out of there. We try, and the first thing he does is lunge at us and try to attack us with his bloody needle. The help we get from the nurses and doctors is their shouted assurances that yes, this guy is HIV positive. Which means if he even pricks me with that needle once, I am HIV positively screwed. Now, I know a lot of security guards out here are going to ask why I didn't mace or tase him at this point. We don't get those where I worked. In fact, we don't get anything at all. 
technically I'm not even allowed to punch or kick this guy because patient safety is number one priority. So we have to grab something, anything to fight the guy with the needle with. One of the guys at the desk grabs a clipboard and uses it as a shield against the needle while we wrestle this guy to the ground and wait for the cops to get there. I am very glad nobody screwed up. One time one of my co-workers came to work really high and violent so he started bashing things with a large knife and spilling enchilada sauce all over the floor and just staring at people. I was 16 at the time and so this was particularly disturbing and scary to me. Thought for sure he was gonna stab someone. I believe he ended up in jail shortly after so I didn't see much of him after that. Working in a dish room. I was loading dishes while my crap head co-worker was opening some new cutlery for us to wash. He was opening bread knives by, get this, grabbing the plastic packaging and yanking the knife out of it with the blade facing his hand. Ended up pulling one out and slicing half his hand in the process. The only way I knew he cut his hand, because I usually ignore whatever bulls he's up to, was he managed to shoot blood all over the counter, the dishes on it, and the wall directly in front of me. I ended up having to bleach everything, including the dishes that the servers would put directly on top of the puddles of blood. Yeah I work with a bunch of idiots. I worked in a restaurant that had a power soaker for pots pans trays. Basically a giant sink with jacuzzi jets. One day I was fishing around in the completely opaque dishwater trying to grab a pot when one of our two foot long carving knives pulls a jaws on me. I better believe I drained that sucker and dealt with it once I could see what was going on inside. I was in charge of stopping trucks when planes came down my taxiway so they didn't collide and an airport operations officer was there to assist me. There was me and two other people watching the same taxiway to ensure that no truck was present when a plane was even close to the crossing. One day, everything is running smooth until I see a truck slam on its brakes part way into the intersection to find that the pilot had turned down the wrong taxiway and stopped in time to keep the turbine far enough away from the truck before it caused any damage. Everything was fine in the end but it's scary to think that it was so close to a major incident. I used to work at a pizza hut in a really bad area of town. One night I was working, and this guy had been calling and complaining all day that his pizza sauce was too spicy. We remade and delivered a pizza three times, and each time the guy was dissatisfied. Finally we're getting near closing so the last time the guy calls, the manager tells him that there's nothing more he can do for him and he's not sending another driver out, if he wants. He's welcome to come down to the store and we can issue him a refund. So now it's almost closing. I'm not issued as someone with closing duties so I'm clocked out and about to leave when spicy guy comes in with his pizza. This guy is tweaking. He's obviously on M or something. And absolutely deranged. But we process the refund and tell him he can keep the pizza. Well he wants us to try it. He opens the box and keeps repeated nah man you gotta try this pizza. So spicy. You guys must be putting chiltepines in it or something. Try my pizza. You gotta try my pizza while repeatedly jabbing his finger into the pizza. Getting sauce all over him. For the record, this sauce is not spicy. If anything, it's disgustingly sweet. But none of us want to try this old ass pizza that this guy is repeatedly jamming his grubby finger into so we kept politely declining. Soon politely comes to bluntly. Then bluntly comes to asking him to leave. He packs up his pizza and leaves without a fuss and we're all left awkwardly standing there. And as the guy pulls away, I decide to break the silence. I turn to my co-worker who I've got a bit of a crush on and say hey, co-worker, wanna try my pizza and we both start giggling insanely. Well, spicy guy saw us giggling through the window and zooms back into his parking spot and bolts back into the store screaming you think something is freaking funny then climbs onto the counter and screams are you laughing at me? You punk. Come the frick outside with me. I'll teach you a freaking lesson while pointing angrily at my co-worker who I was hitting on. We all start panicking and telling him to leave while threatening to call the cops. He finally leaves while still screaming obscenities and my manager runs and locks the door. Okay, we're safe now, right? Nope. This loon starts circling the building in his truck waiting for someone to leave on a delivery. When he realizes we aren't that freaking stupid. He rolls his window, and points a gun at my co-worker and I. We all hit the deck, the waitress is sobbing, and the manager is frantically dialing 911. The guy leaves before the cops show up, but that wasn't the last of him. 
he kept repeatedly calling the store the next day screaming that he was gonna kill us and all this stuff. Well, we have his address from deliveries. He got arrested pretty quickly after that, and that's how I got almost got several people shot by asking my co-worker to eat me out. I own a machine shop. We have a large vertical lathe and one day we were turning this 150 pounds piece of steel about 20 inches diameter and 4-5 inches thick. Well the operator turned up the RPMs thinking he was going to save some time. This 150 pound steel frisbee came loose from the chuck and flew through the back of the machine. Over another machine. Missed a guy by maybe 10-15 feet and slammed into a concrete wall door frame completely destroying it. It flew about 100 feet faster than you could blink. I'd rather get shot with a cannon that got hit with that. It was terrifying. I don't know if I'd call this scary or just sad. And settling. I used to work as a cashier in a liquor store. And there were always the regulars. People who are waiting outside the door before we have even opened. At 9am. They come every day and always buy the same thing. Usually a pint or two of cheap vodka. Often coming in two or three times a day. They always have exact change. They never want a receipt. In the morning, their hands are shaking. They can barely speak. And they look like they're about to pass out. When they come in the second or third time. They're much more relaxed but their speech is slurred. A few times customers peed themselves at the register or fell down and could barely stand back up. It's the saddest thing I've ever seen. And scary. To think they're there so addicted to alcohol that they can't stop themselves or accept help from this destructive lifestyle that will kill them. Just for a side note, and I asked my boss this within a week of working here, we're not allowed to deny a customer unless they are under 21, or are causing a disruption in the store. I hated serving these people and hope they are all able to get help. A buddy of mine took a second job a liquor store. He said that the actual work was pretty easy, but one night, a lady came in crying. She puts a big bottle of cheap vodka and tearfully begs my friend to talk her out of buying it and falling off the wagon. He successfully did it, but after that he noped hard out of that job. Work in a hospital. We had a major gas leak and had to evacuate both the adult and ped's ERs. It was an all hands on board situation. If you could push a stretcher they expected you to help. Our ERs can hold up to 400 people. Thankfully we only had 200. The smell of natural gas was filling up the facility so we were evacuating them to the ambulance bays. The lobbies. Always whatever we had to do. Took almost 2 hours to shut down the gas and another hour to get patients back to the bays in the ERs. Then we had to run around grabbing the oxygen tanks and such. Thankfully nobody was hurt but knowing the place you are helping people and could blow up at any minute is really unnerving. I used to work for an electronics store, and we were open late on Thursday nights. They weren't ever busy, so we only had one person on from about 5pm until close at 9pm. This was in a nice, upper middle class neighborhood, and I lived around the corner from the store, so that person was usually me. One night a guy comes in, and he's furious about some product he's bought not working like he expected it to. It's not faulty. He just didn't do his research when he bought it and thought it was a different thing. We can't return or refund it in this case. I'm explaining this to him, and he's getting more and more angry and eventually moves into threatening. I tell him if he's going to be like that I'm going to call the police. He grabs me by the collar over the counter and says well you'd better call them pretty freaking quickly then. I should point out here that this guy was about 6 feet 4, and I am a 5 feet 3 120 pound woman. I was also 19 at the time. This is about as terrifying as it gets. I slam the emergency button under the counter. The police station is less than a minute away so I figure they'll be there quickly enough. The guy, at this point, lets go of my collar and shoves me into the wall behind the counter. Then comes around and pins me against the wall. He's shaking me and screaming in my face when the cops get there. I spend the rest of the evening giving statements. No serious damage done but a lot of bruising. For bigger purchases at this store we take it for the warranty. And after I explained to the manager what happened she pulled his id from the system so she could familiarize the staff with his face and we could contact security if he ever came back. The address on his license was right across the street from my house. I lived in that house for a year and never once left the house without being terrified I'd run into him. Needless to say I don't work there anymore.
Serious, what job is always misrepresented in movies and TV shows, and what is it really like? Many are. Lawyers are one. Most of it is long hours of mind-numbing research and drudge work. They are not always in court wowing people with insightful cross-examinations and brilliant closing arguments. Most forensic law shows where the same characters act as detectives, go out in the field and collect evidence, take it back to the lab and analyze it themselves, and then bring down the bad guy in court. They'd have you think that the entire chain of custody is one person when it's really like 10 different jobs rolled into one. Generally politics government. Oddly Parks and Rec gets really really close to viral. I feel like 90% of the time I see someone welding in a movie they are holding a cutting torch. I've seen arc welders used in place of cutting torches as well. Weird. All mechanics are secretly super smart talented and are only working as a mechanic to make ends meet due to the tragic circumstances in their life that made THRM give up on their dreams. Most mechanics I know are pretty happy with where they are in life and enjoy their jobs. Janitors. Janitors are always having a blast listening to their music and singing into their mop. Hackers. Most aren't criminals. They work for security companies paid to find weakness in online security. And they don't hack into a system just by typing fervently for 5 seconds. Locksmith lockpicking. Attention wrench is never in sight. Terminator 2. Sarah Connor uses attention wrench. Archaeologists and paleontologists. Know what's fun? Flying to places like Egypt or Mexico to find ruins. No way is not fun. Bug bites. Heat stroke. Going for days without a bath in 50 degree. With humidity, weather, sunburn, digging for hours, decoding pictographs that were written and eroded thousands of years ago, being overshadowed by someone who pretends to be the sole person on the expedition, being tossed aside by someone who wants to advance their career and attempts to take credit for your stuff, accidentally breaking something, the dirt, the heat, and did I mention the stink? A kid has never delivered my newspaper. It's usually some old guy who appears to be drunk driving. There's a King of the Hill episode about this. The editor of the Arlen Bystander didn't like that all of their papers were delivered by a bunch of guys getting drunk in the parking lot of a 7 stroke 11. So they switched to hiring kids for the image. The music industry is made up of guys going from show to show just hoping to hear some unknown band that they can offer a big money contract to on the spot. But these music industry people are always on the lookout for a hot new sound, and certainly not interested in something that sounds like everything else and thus proven to be marketable. I work for a label. Scouting for a new act is my sitting at my desk and listening to bad demo after bad demo. It always makes me feel so conflicted between wow, this is awful and this is this person's life dream that I am thoughtlessly throwing away. I love my job, but it sure is a lot of bad music and spreadsheets some days. Being a fighter pilot. Most of the time we are just flying around in the local airspace practicing against each other. Couple of times each year we fly to some other state to practice against each other. Once a year we go to a friendly country to practice against each other. All this excitement mixed in with the paperwork management and epic bureaucracy of every other soulless government job. The real busy guys are the ones who drop bombs and haul cargo. The rest exist to get better at dog fighting each other in the hopes that our skills are a deterrent to real combat engagement. Yes. It's still a fun dream job but I hoped it would be more like Top Gun than The Office. Fire suppression sprinkler systems. A pretty common trope is that one character will activate a fire alarm pull station, setting off the sprinklers throughout the building, in order to get out of class, work, etc. Pulling the fire alarm will never set off the sprinklers. The sprinkler system works like this. The sprinkler pipes are filled with water when the system is installed. There is a pump on the system, which keeps the water in the pipes constantly under pressure. The sprinkler heads are just an opening in the pipe and a small, star-shaped plate which causes the water to spray in all directions. There is a glass tube which plugs the opening in the sprinkler head. The glass tube is filled with a liquid which expands a lot when heated. When the glass tube is heated enough, the liquid expands to the point where it shatters the glass. With the glass broken, it can no longer plug the opening in the sprinkler head. The water then sprays out. The only way more than one head can activate at a time is if they are all heated enough to allow liquid to shatter the glass plug in each. 
Pulling a fire alarm station will set off the fire alarm throughout the building, but it will not set off sprinklers. Source, I install fire alarm systems. And the water most likely won't be clear. More likely that it will be reddish brown and smell terrible. Security. Not a lot of shows show just how mind numbing it is to watch a security camera for 8 hours. I think a lot of shows get security right. Most of them the bad guy just sneaks past them because the guard fell asleep. My favorite is when I see a lab setting in a show and there are always beakers filled with some kind of colored liquid and it's boiling for no apparent reason. I have only worked in a couple labs but if I saw a beaker with a weird color boiling then I would probably be concerned. Especially if it's not under a hood. The hazardous waste at my last job always came out pink and as nice as it was to look at I'm pretty sure you don't want that boiling for no reason. This isn't really a job. But it's related. Students. I will never understand how people cast like 26 year olds to play high school sophomores or some crap. In an actual high school, half of the people look like they're about 12. Also, passing time is 5 minutes. Tops. None of that 20 minute montage bulls where the characters have time to do anything but haul butt to their next class because it's on the other side of the building. Bullying in high school isn't a group of football players pointing at some kid in glasses and going haha, loser. Absolutely no one does that. It's subtweeting and whispering and saying crap to wind people up and make it look like it was their fault. It's baffling how much they get wrong. I think the people that direct those movies are taking from their own high school experiences in the 70s and 80s which are no longer relevant, or very rare, today. 21 Jump Street actually makes fun of this. Long time AMT here, most of the stuff we do is really boring, probably 95% of the calls are on RBS. You probably wouldn't believe how many times when I ask so why did you call 9, 1, 1, that I get told well. I got Medicaid and if I go to the hospital in an ambulance I'll get seen quicker. I've picked up people for things like headaches, back pain, knee pain, toothaches. One of the most memorable BS calls I've ever ran in my life is a guy that called 911 because he was working on his van and it fell off the jack. He wasn't under the van at the time but standing 10-15 feet away and the noise scared him. Yes, really. My favorite was always the I hurt myself 3 weeks ago and I'm calling you at 4am because it still hurts but no, I don't want to go to the hospital. Librarians on TV are usually depicted as people who sit at a desk all day, reading, and shush people. Librarians in real life do wildly different tasks depending on the kind of library they work at. The librarian sitting at the desk in a public library will sometimes read or browse the internet at downtime but it's only because there's nobody there looking for help or reference. In the back office there's usually another librarian or two who are planning future programs. Selecting materials to purchase license. Weeding out materials that aren't circulating. Planning displays. Or managing the department's budget. At the library I work at, the librarians rotate time at the reference desk. Librarians at a college library will be assisting with research, conducting research of their own, running a class to teach board undergrads how to use this, that, or the other database, as well as some of the above tasks, like managing purchases or, more usually, managing licensing, or budgeting. A librarian at a museum or archive might be trying to figure out how to digitize a rare book without destroying it or how to best catalog a map. Some librarians do a lot of the above but with additional training and degrees like a legal or medical librarian and so they never interact with the public. There's a big difference between librarian and someone who works at a library, though. Capital L librarians are master's degrees professionals. The clerk working the checkout desk shushing people is unlikely to be a librarian. I noticed this while watching a lot of Christmas movies on Lifetime and Hallmark. Jobs in advertising. In movies they are always preparing for a giant presentation right before the holidays and have no time for anything else when in real life, a campaign for the holidays would have already been sold months ago and already running. A grave isn't a perfectly dug out rectangular prism. That's a good way to have it collapse. Fear more like a steep bowl. Security guard. Suppose it'd be weird to see a guard in a show watching shows on his phone or tablet. Astronomer here. 
We never really go to an observatory on a mountain top, let alone actually look through the telescope anymore. There are still some astronomers who do visit the observatory, perhaps once a year or so, but for the majority of us you are doing remote observing most of the time, or having others take the data for you and downloading it onto a computer for analysis. Then we just sit in our offices all day analyzing it and writing up what we've found. There's also a hell you've a lot fewer aliens than you'd think from watching television. Scientists. They are often portrayed as being universal problem solvers who know all the sciences and are super smart. In reality, scientists have highly specialized expertise, don't know much outside their own field, are more intelligent than average but not much more. Social workers in the UK. TV would have you believe that social workers can just take children into care for the minimal of reasons. They never portray that social workers have to amass evidence, make an application to the court, and present their evidence. Only then can a decision be made an order granted, and this decision is made by a judge and not the social worker. We have TV show called EastEnders and they portray social workers terribly. It's lazy writing that just feeds into the misconception. A popular show as this could really challenge these misconceptions, but they just feed the ignorant. Flight Attendant. It's portrayed as such glamorous life. It can be. After 30 years of seniority, it's a lot of early mornings with no sleep and a lot waiting in airports. I don't see software QA come up in movies TV very often, but when I do, it seems to be along the lines of let's play this completely constructed, finished immersive video game and check to make sure it's as fun as we thought it was going to be. We'll have a blast, as long as there aren't any horrible ice waiting to torture us. But software testing is a lot more of like, do this really specific sequence of actions that we found 2 years ago to break the system. Does it break the system again? Nope. Good. Okay. Now, do this other really specific sequence. Does it break the system again? Yep. Okay. Log it. Document it. Now do this third really specific sequence. My dev test friends and I burst out laughing when the team and grandma's boy found all the bugs. More out of embarrassments for the writers and cast than any actual comedic intent. I've been rewatching early seasons of Friends and it seems any time Ross gets a call into work it's to adjust a display. Something tells me a paleontologist has somewhat higher responsibilities. Pizza delivery drivers none are handsome, well hung studs in their 20s. I was a pizza delivery guy, I delivered many a large sausage. People just paid me for the pizza and I left. University professors. For starters, a lot of university faculty is not full-time tenure, they're underpaid contract faculty that's probably significantly below the poverty line and are fighting tooth and nail for something resembling job security. It's also not a whole lot of inspirational lectures that change the lives of their students, though that does happen, and then you just head off to your glorious mahogany filled office to do some light reading writing before heading home for the night. It's also a lot of behind the classroom scenes work including lesson planning prep work, administrative committee work, personal research report book writing, conference presentations, peer reviewing editing etc. Anything that will help to make a name for yourself in your respective field. Some session or part time instructor friends work 60 plus and get paid less than 20,000 slash year. Some former, tenured, colleagues of mine work 80 plus HRS a week, not all though. Farmers growers. They are usually portrayed as ignorant rustics, lacking in knowledge about much outside their farms. Meet most of them now and you'll find that very few fit that stereotype. Now most have agricultural degrees with environmental science backgrounds. While old school methods are not completely obsolete, these modern methods and advanced knowledge have helped the average grower in all areas of their livelihood. I have a hay supplier who actually works for Cargill full time and his hay operation is so technologically advanced. It is amazing. The knowledge of each field soil analysis is in depth and consistent, and quality control is very accurate. It's almost like feeding people is an industry with some money behind it. Almost. Police officers. 50% paperwork. 40% sitting in one spot or driving around. 10% the action you see on TV. Any computer programming job. Whether it be hacking into the mainframe or let me code you up something quick that will do the trick it's always just people bashing their hands against a keyboard. They never show the planning, 
requirements documents, licensing the software or tools you need, waiting for approval, working in a team, anything like that. I stop watching shows when a character just develops a fix that saves a day in like 40 seconds because that's more unrealistic than if that person flew around the world and reversed time like Superman. Nobody wants to watch a show about a guy staring at a wall or walking aimlessly around for hours while they work something out in their head, though. Soldiers. Not one myself, but if Reddit is correct it's very long stretches of boredom interrupted by very short moments of danger. Also there's lots of fapping apparently. Writer. They always portray them as disorganized, or drunk, or out of touch with reality, and successful, but this is rarely the case. It's lots of hard work slipped in between a day job so we can put food on the table. And if you're drunk all the time, you never get writing finished. You may turn out a rough draft that way, but it's virtually impossible to edit to a publishable draft that way. And some of us don't drink or use drugs at all. I think somewhere between Edgar Allan Poe, Ernest Hemingway, Hunter S. Thompson, and Stephen King the idea of a doped up smoker chained to a typewriter took hold in the collective conscious of the world. <laughs> Doctors. Misconceptions because of Hollywood about healthcare. 1. That all female doctors wear high heels in hospital. 2. That every doctor bangs every other doctor in hospital. 3. That at the end of every day in the hospital chasing cars start playing and you narrate the significant things that happened that day in your head. 4. That as soon you stub a toe and go to the hospital you will get hooked up to a heart rate monitor and get infusion. 5. That a heart rate monitor will be all you need to recognize serious events for patients. 6. That a heart rate monitor makes the traditional long beep when heart stops. 7. That you have to fire adrenaline right into the heart, looking at you Quentin. 8. Hollywood portrays US healthcare about love and patient care. Even though US healthcare is centered around squeezing the most money out of those that have insurances, you can literally fly retour to Spain and have a holiday and get a hip replacement in Spain for same money. 9. That most of healthcare isn't just waiting a lot as a patient, especially in a 10. That scanning with MRI or CT will always result in a correct diagnosis. 11. That most of patients are young and healthy except for that dramatic seizure or sickness. Most patients in real life are old to very old and are smokers overweight etc. The young and healthy ones with sudden diseases are a rare sighting. 12. That every doctor has all the time in the world. 13. Comas are very common and people wake up from it all the time with no consequences. 14. That life in hospital is not monotonous. Also, that most people come back from codes. The military. Very few films get it right. Watch any war film with a combat vet and they'll pick it apart. It's usually the little things that bother us. In combat, you're filthy, yet everyone in the movies is spot clean. When I was deployed no one showered for 4-6 months. Also, nobody wears dog tags besides boots. New guys. But in every movie you have some shirtless dude walking around with his tags dangling from his neck. In real life. Almost everything is semi-auto, but in the movies everything is fully auto, even the M16s and M4S. During a scene in the Hurt Locker you see one Humvee driving down the street. Never gonna happen. Anytime a vehicle goes outside the wire it's a full convoy of up to a dozen armored Vicks. There's a lot of things wrong with that movie but I still enjoy it. I'm going to go on a limb here and say chemistry teachers don't actually cook M on the side and throw pizzas on their roofs. Not so much a job, but going to jail. You always see two or three friends put in the same cell or something. If anything, when you get to jail you might wait an hour tops in a drunk tank with a friend. But after that, you will be booked, separated, and locked down on your own. There is no grace period with a phone and your friends standing around. Teaching. We are mainly not idealistic weavers of imagination and dreams, sadists who hate kids or frustrated M cooking geniuses. We are a motley crew who generally got into teaching as a second or third career option and stayed on the crap wages as we enjoy the holidays and the interaction with the kids. 
The idealistic, do-gooding types normally quit fairly fast because they can't cope with the copious bureaucratic bollocks or the harrowing child protection meetings that were oddly missing from dead poets society. Also generally underrepresented are the levels of mental illness alcoholism, the way your life morphs into a countdown to the next weekend holiday, and the fairly rife shagging of colleagues. The most accurate representation has probably been the old British show teachers, and that had freaking zebras running down the hallways. I disagree with the second or third career option comment. Myself and every teacher I know either always wanted to be a teacher or took on teaching as a second career because what we did before wasn't fulfilling enough. Everything else is pretty dead on. As for shows that get it right, I thought Boston Public was pretty accurate. What was the scandal at your high school college job? Catholic school. Father T got a student pregnant. We all thought he was gay. So that was a surprise. Are the all switcheroo. Our vice principal stole a ham from the local supermarket. That has to be a great conversation starter at parties. Our principal divorced his wife and married a girl who had graduated from the school like not even a year before, so technically legal. 20 years later and they're still married, and he's won educator awards lol. I once worked in a very rural area with identical twins, steel working, hardcore guys. The one twin's wife had an affair with the other and had a child. Genetic testing couldn't tell the difference between the two potential fathers, so they took it to Mori. Highly entertaining. Would watch again if I could find it. Thanks for the memories, Arkansas. Fellow Arkansans I wish we make TV for something less trashy. <laughs> Student in my high school math class tried to get our teacher fired when her mark wasn't high enough. Her mom happened to be a superintendent who was best friends with our principal, but thankfully he didn't get canned. He was a great teacher. I think he lost the gig teaching AP math though. Sounds like a stuck up B of a student. One of the teachers was caught drunk driving and spinning his car in circles on the highway one night. He was forced to retire the next week. High school. Someone took a circular saw to the ceiling and made a hidden room in the roof of the school. Had carpets, a mini fridge, and some furniture. Always stocked with food. Great place to be, until the administration caught on. My dad works for our city's school board and I remember him coming home telling a story like this. He went to a school to plan some renovations and they found a fort with couches and fridges. But there was no floors, they'd been up in the rafters above the auditorium. My dad was pretty impressed lol. In college, we had the pillow rapist. Basically, in the dorms, a girl would go to shower and leave her door unlocked. A pillow rapist would go into the room and jerk off on her pillow and turn it over. He got caught because a girl came back to her room for something she forgot. We also had a peeping Tom in the girls showers. That guy broke his leg when he ran away and jumped off a second story balcony. Fun fact, he wasn't a student. That guy broke his leg when he ran away and jumped off a second story balcony. Ah, the John Wilkes Booth method. Back in high school, my two band directors were having an affair with each other. They thought they were subtle, I guess, but everyone in the school knew. They were always in the office with the blinds closed, or off taking long lunches with each other. At band competitions and trips they would disappear for hours. Of course they were both married with young children. Eventually they decided to both move into the same neighborhood and go work at a different school together. I often wonder if this affair is still going on. I'm pretty sure at least one of them is still married. Worked at a grocery store in high school. Our store manager had an affair with the Coca-Cola vendor. His wife found out and came into the store screaming I want everyone to know what you did to me made a huge scene. The store manager dragged his wife out of the store by her throat and was promptly fired. Not sure whatever happened to that Coca-Cola vendor. Sells Pepsi now. Our computer science teacher was a perv. He had a student stay after class so he can beat off in front of her. In high school one of the weird kids was caught finger banging his girlfriend in the courtyard during class. Said courtyard was surrounded by three stories of classrooms with open windows they were not subtle at all. People called him the four finger assassin for the rest of the year. Four finger assassin. What a dope band name. Three guys were hospitalized after a wino and the town managed to sell them denatured ethanol as moonshine. 
The same stuff you put in your car for washing the windshield. I don't know if he had made it somehow a bit more agreeable by some trick. Probably. A year later someone tried to burn down the entire school. But whoever started it, either was a real freaking idiot, or just hated the shop class teached. But they started the fire in the one class that is completely fireproofed from the rest of the school. Because, shop classes were to that kind of accidents without arson. Had a girl in high school lie about banging a teacher. He was gone for a few months before they caught her lying about it. Felt bad for the dude. Sophomore year we found out some upperclassmen boys had compiled a collection of nudes of girls and were passing around a list of them to other boys. They were selling access to them apparently, with higher prices for more desirable girls. It was pretty fricked up and a lot of them were suspended and expelled from athletic programs they were in. We used to have this crazy hot teacher who would always wear little skirts to a boys school, and some dudes would take photos up her skirt and sell them to other dudes. It became a thing that everyone perved over her and one day a guy saw a bra in the back seat of her car and he got caught breaking in to steal it. Teacher and principal had a lesbian affair. One of them was married. Same happened at my school, except it was two teachers. The married one's husband killed both of them before killing himself. Choir teacher at my fairly prestigious high school was embezzling money from the choir department through overcharging students for travel, concerts, field trips, to fund his gambling addiction. Ended up stealing over dollar sign 60,000 over the course of about 20 years. Also one of the high school teachers was trying to hook up with underage girls. One of them ended up being an undercover cop. He had a pregnant wife who worked in the same district at my elementary school. She's a wonderful woman and I felt terrible for her. I thought undercover cops posing as high school kids was something you only saw in movies. Guy got forced into resigning from his position at work. He was a big shot in the company. His father worked here for decades. Then he came in and worked here for at least two decades. Guy was a big butthole. Loved to push people around. Belittle them. Berate them over trivial junk. He was slated to become president of the company but I think most of the workforce declared they'd quit if that happened, which would completely put the company out of business since most of those guys are skilled labor. I also have a sneaking suspicion that he may have been involved in an ethics violation, but I've never asked the other people whom I think are involved. There was an assembly with all 1500 plus high school students. The new student body president and the other seniors that held positions put on a skit, each class did, where they made fun of a freshman girl. Apparently the girl gave an upperclassman a BJ on a party bus. For the skit they all walked around in a circle with a sign that said party bus and met up with other people who were drinking slurpees, from 7 stroke 11, and watching a movie that rhymes with her last name. Like 20 kids got suspended. My co-worker had been married to a man who allowed her to pay off her student loans and supported her for years. After years of trying for a baby she was finally pregnant. Yay. Cue to rumors going around how people saw her staying late in the big boss's office and how she was seen running from his car in the early morning before work. Eventually she has the baby and months later says that her husband got a job back home. Which is odd because his field is so specialized that it can only be found in a few pockets around the country. She moves home and Big Boss quits his job to work for another local organization. She moves back and has another baby. Yay. Turns out, both babies were her bosses and she had divorced her husband before she even had the first baby. She's a really good secret keeper that one. Butthole rich kid was doing donuts in the student parking lot. Fricked up and crashed into two other cars. Relatively minor damages but he lied and said he just accidentally turned into them despite numerous witnesses. Needless to say he is now, even more, hated and no longer allowed to park on campus. These two girls were straight A student types. One day a teacher does something to pee them off. I can't remember exactly what. Something to do with not giving them extra credit because they didn't follow the instructions to the letter. He had two goldfish in his classroom that he took care of for a long time. Years, and they were pretty big if I remember. He comes in one day and one of them is stabbed into the wall or a desk with a note that says give us the extra credit or the other one gets it. From one I heard he was pretty heartbroken. The two girls got very mild punishment because of their good grades. One of my friends and I bought him another fish as a gesture afterwards. 
but I think it may have been too soon because he seemed kinda perturbed when we brought it in. Holy crap that's fricked up. Some of the girls created a burn book straight out of Mean Girls. I'm not kidding. Some of the wonderful highlights of this book were, claiming that one of the only LGBT plus was making it up for attention, calling a right wing leaning kid the next Hitler, stating that one of the kids needed to be hit by a truck, and my personal favorite, said the girl whose mum had been murdered needed to just get over it and stop begging for attention. Needless to say, they had a huge target on them once it got found out. A young woman who lived in one of my colleges on campus dormitories had something of an interesting sexual fetish, and she wound up getting kicked out as a result of it. That may seem like an overreaction, but, well, let me explain. About a month into my first semester of attending a university, rumors started circulating that some odd characters had been seen haunting the residential areas. Their descriptions had a tendency to shift depending on who was talking about them, but one detail, the fact that they all looked homeless, stayed the same. Furthermore, these individuals always seemed like they were interested in one particular building, sometimes approaching people who lived there and asking to be let in. Someone in a position of authority finally took notice of this trend, and after a round of particularly pointed questions, the truth of the matter came out. One of the students, the young woman that I mentioned, had been going out into the city, finding homeless men, and bringing them back to her dormitory. At that point, she would bathe them, share a pizza with them, and then sleep with them. They would be sent on their way the following morning. But as you can imagine, the prospect of sex and snacks was enough to prompt inquiries for repeat performances, which ultimately led to the location becoming a veritable shaggy laugh for street people. When the girl was found out, a joke went around that she would be joining her former flings in their cardboard boxes. TL. DR. A young woman was running a full service homeless shelter out of her dormitory. Rich kid was class pres and was really popular with the girls. Got into college and couldn't handle the transition too well. Started doing coke. Got addicted. Got busted. Kicked out of college. Moved back home. And nobody has heard from him since. Supposedly he is going to rehab and works as a ranch hand on his dad's farm. High school. Our class valedictorian had an affair with our recently divorced history teacher and cheated on her math tests. Was still able to be valedictorian as the investigations continued past the end of grading for the semester. College. Anonymous guy would flash female joggers in broad daylight on busy streets and run away. Police never caught him. There was also some creepy clown sightings and a pyromaniac lighting doors on fire in the dorms. Never caught either. Job. My department at work has to cooperate with a certain city official who thinks arsenic in drinking water is totally okay. Talks down to women no matter their job. And has caused so much drama shouting matches at meetings we sometimes hold secret meetings to actually get work done on the project he's tried to stall for a few years now. During a prep rally there was a contest for the best skit. People did pop culture references, funny skits, etc. Until two dumb fricks decided to do a skit of Chris Brown beating Rihanna in blackface. We made the national news and now that contest is no longer running. What always surprised me is people were more outraged about the blackface than attempting to make fun of domestic abuse. So you are saying someone saw them walk on stage in blackface and said well, let's see where they are going with this. We ran out of tea at work and one of the ladies told the office manger that this is the second time. He told her to go frick herself in front of everyone else and he wasn't going to go to shoppers to buy her tea. She's have to wait for the order to come in. She got mad, bitched to the office about how terrible he is at his job. Little does she know everyone loves the office manger. Great guy. The office also turned on her because she uses 3 tea bags at a time. We also had a meeting that day where there was extra sandwiches. She hovered around the boardroom till they brought out the extra sandwiches and promptly packed up 3 to 4 to save for her lunches this week. Everyone else had to share extra salads and carrots without dip. She has now been blacklisted. We all stood around and ate the no dip carrots bitching. I made a throwaway because this would totally dox me in real life. I work at a small college and there are very few faculty members. One day, one of the professors we were working with just disappeared in the middle of the semester. Like, he was teaching classes one day and then gone the next. 
No information about where he went, or why or what happened and if he was coming back. He even won the award for best professor of the year and a colleague just accepted it for him and was like, this would mean so much for him. So like, almost a year goes by and everyone is still thinking maybe this guy is coming back because no one ever says. Anyway, one day we get to work and everyone is freaking out because this guy is on the front page of the paper for distributing child pornography. Bad enough. Except then later a story is published that states he wasn't a pedophile. He was a closeted married Mormon guy and what he would do is go onto chat rooms and impersonate being a 12 year old girl to get these guys to expose themselves to him. So he was essentially just using the illicit photos because he didn't want to be gay. Because that was too much for him. It was pretty much the stupidest crime and he blew his whole life over it. Whoa. If he had said he was a 18 year old girl, it would have worked as well. My form teacher was a pedophile. It came out that he was living with a 13 year old girl, a friend's daughter apparently. He was in his late 50s maybe. He was disgusting. He made our skin crawl. He was always asking the girls in our class to help him sort the store cupboard out but the boys would always volunteer and never let us near him. We were only 11 but I'll be forever grateful to the lads in class who protected us. The teachers knew something was off. He volunteered to drive me and two friends to sports day once when he overheard us telling the receptionist that the bus had left without us. Another teacher was nearby and interrupted him. He said no he wasn't letting us get in his car and the other teacher would take us in the school minibus. God knows what would have happened if we had been forced into the car. As 12 year olds you feel like you have to do what a teacher tells you. Someone from the school called a girl's parents because she was dating a black guy. This was in 2008. A teacher was fricking a student at school. A teacher was fricking a student at college. My boss was stealing from the employees at work. That I was having an affair with an intern. I wasn't. Can almost guarantee that the rumor was started by another employee jealous that the intern gave you any sort of attention, but wasn't as friendly with them. This one is more of a church community scandal than a school or job one. An old friend of mine recently got married. The man she married is, 1, 15 years older than her and has 3 children, 2, the minister who performed her first wedding, 3, her youth group minister when she was 11 years old. Wow the trifecta. My high school algebra trig teacher had 5 children. One was her husband's. She had a habit of sleeping with troubled students who needed help passing. Currently, we're about to put an expansion on our building, and a large, vocal minority of employees want that extra money to go into raises and bonuses. Management will not budge. There was a math teacher at my school that was obviously more friendly with some students than others and would often stop class when a player on the basketball team would come to talk to her. Everyone knew something was up and when she got caught they found out it was 8 of the 15 players on the basketball team. Needless to say she was fired but her husband who still worked there and was a coach for the girls volleyball team was still there for the rest of the semester. Thing is our basketball team won the state championships back to back while this was going on and after she was fired we haven't come close. One way to keep up morale. A girl got promoted within 6 months of being hired. She had no experience in this field, is like 23, and not anything special. Everyone thought she and my supervisor were sleeping together. She would stay late in his office, was always physically close. Constantly texting and tattling to him for every tiny thing. Apparently both of them left their fiancés for each other, and she is 6 months pregnant, which is about when she got promoted. I think she was still with her fiancé at the time of conception. Oh yeah, it's Facebook official, and the company owner claims to have founded his company on Christian values. Aside from teachers freaking students there wasn't really anything huge that happened. But one time the janitor got part of his finger chopped off while working with a lawnmower and the ag students had to go look for it. Our purchasing director is a snobby bee and always talks down on everybody who doesn't kiss her butt. She especially hates our production workers or anybody that works in the manufacturing side of our facility because she thinks they are all idiots. Well, 
We had a huge 20th anniversary party for our company where the owner rented rooms for every employee at the Marriott and Dallas and provided unlimited food and booze all weekend long including Friday. This lady got super trashed with one of the production workers and mind you she's 20 plus years his senior. He took her upstairs because she couldn't walk and she proceeded to vomit all over both of her beds and began to strip naked. He called housekeeping to help get her covered up and change her sheets so he could leave. The next day we went out to dinner and she was a no-show. I haven't heard much from her since everything went down but I know she knows everyone and the back is aware of what happened. Counterfeiting ring. I was 15 and apparently the ringleader. I got searched by local, state, and the secret service without parents being notified. I tried to spend a counterfeit dollar, which was obviously counterfeit but did not notice because I am an idiot. When I saw it my argument was I could make a better one than that. 10 days suspension for being a smartest idiot. The fact you spelled counterfeit as counterfeit should help with your case tremendously. We had a new math teacher at my middle school. He was kind of intimidating but taught well. One day, some 6th grader was messing around in computer lab and decided to start googling teachers. Turns out the new math teacher had killed his father in a murder-suicide pact but hadn't done the suicide part. He had been charged but let out after 2 years. This was a private school. Why they never did a background check still confuses me. He eventually was found out and fired. When someone hacked into someone else's computer and created a google doc with a picture of Deadpool. Then one tard blew it up and said that someone sent an email to a teacher that said frick you. They made a full on investigation, monitored all of our emails, and even had a cop come and talk about it. It was all basically made up. Our passwords were all one. This sounds like a story told by Creed Bratchen. In high school, someone got a hold of a bunch of nudes of girls from every grade. Then made an Instagram account under the username acronym of school exposed. Finally, they started posting a couple and no one was caught. Girls basketball coach quits when star senior graduates, moved to Utah, start family. He was in his late 30s and it was pretty gross. Principal took a kid's phone for texting during class. He didn't have a lock on his phone, so principal got on it and started texting the kid's girlfriend asking for nudes. The kid was with his girlfriend at the time, and told their parents. It became a huge thing. Principal got put on paid leave and then next year stayed on as principal and still is today. Guess it pays off when you have friends in high places. You have been visited by the romantic doggo. Comment love is magic so you never fall in the friend zone. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Or don't. Either way, have a great day you magnificent people.